Let's put the eco flow aside and let me show you how I made my power station for 300 bucks and we're using old batteries from city scooters. And after fully charging the 3.6 kilowatt hour battery up, we can use appliances up to 2.5 kilowatts and even charging an electric car. So please take a seat and let me show you how I put everything together. And it all begins by choosing an inverter, which I will talk more about in the video. Then you have to pick the batteries of your choice. In my case, I used 36 volt batteries from electric scooters, which were deemed to be recycled. And I got the opportunity to have a lot of them. And I mean it, a lot of them. And I decided to go with the DeWalt box, which I will talk more about in the video. So after fitting all the batteries and inverter, we can go and fit the chargers. Real big mess, but not anymore. Then we have to measure out all the holes for the fan and all the other accessories so it's a lot of putting it back together, disassembling, putting it back together to make everything fit correctly. Then after some trial and error the box looked like this. In my opinion I don't really like how the fan looks, it looks kinda edgy but it works great. And this is how the box looks when it's finished so let's go and do some testing. And just as a quick note the only thing I paid for was the inverter so 270 bucks except taxes and of course all the other small stuff so it's around 300 bucks so we can either charge it by using the external dc port and use the solar panels to charge it but then you need to have a, an external dc to dc converter so this is just straight up power into the battery positive and negative or we can just use the onboard chargers which are 10 amp together each charger for each battery is a 2 amp charger each so 10 amps so you just have to have an external cord plug it in and it's charging and i didn't make this so much for backup power it was just a cool project because i had so many batteries laying around it's just something fun you can just use and try out charge your electric bike if you need it and just something every day I wire just once. But those kilowatt hours comes at a hefty price because this box is really heavy actually. So if you just want to carry it to the beach, that's not gonna do it. You just gotta have like, you can maybe put it like on a scooter or something else with wheels. In the back we have two outlets so paralleled together and the cooling fan. And I should also mention that the cooling fan has its AC to DC converter, one from the input power and one DC converter from the output power radiator. So there are two converters. They are put in series with thermal switches. One is located on the inverter and one is located on the battery. So when either of them exceeds 25 degrees Celsius, the fan turns on. And if you guys are building something like this, I would highly recommend you go for inverters from this brand. I've had them for years, I've had five of them, never had them break and they just work flawlessly. I recently upgraded my solar system using this 5000 watt inverter from the same company and it works very well but you just have to keep in mind if you're gonna use this power station 24 7 it's important to see how many watts it's drawing while it's just on standby mode this one i think it's drawing around 20 watts but that inverter is using 60 watts which is a lot for only 24 hours it's like 1.5 kilowatt hours which is a lot but if you are using it occasionally to charge an electric car appliances for maybe one two hours then you can go for whatever inverter i would just go for the biggest one that fits because then you have more flexibility for things you can actually plug in something i've also learned over the years by building these power packs is use a box that's more like a softer plastic because before i had that makira box and you can see that it broke because this box was so heavy and the plastic from that box was very like hard so it broke off but the dewalt boxes they are very good i would highly recommend them they also have good hinging points all across 
and it's very well reinforced with all these plastic pieces over here so i don't think this will break they also have good handles over here so you can pick it up you don't have to put your fingers underneath which was very troublesome on the makita box it's just basically a much better overall experience if you have a good box and you know what i actually want to see if this works because i always wish to have a battery like this on the trails so to charge my bike and here's the charger the bad thing with this charger you can't vary the power it's just like two kilowatts and two kilowatts only so you need an inverter that can handle it and it's 220 volts it's not a problem in europe but in the us it's kind of problem so i just turned off the charger turn it on and the cool thing about these newer units you can see the wattage and everything over here so we'll see so the bike is plugged in as you can see fan kicked on we're going to charge it in a normal mode let's see fan kicked on on the charger something clicked on the bike and it's ramping up power the good thing about this charger is ramping up power and not just full blasting yeah 2.2 kilowatts it's doing it all by itself so i can basically take this thing with me and charge the bike if i need it out on the trails also the battery on this bike is how many kilowatt hours i think it's 3.8 yes i think it's a usable it's around 3.2 or something like that so it's basically a full charge on this bike which is kind of cool actually works fine also want to try put it in fast charge i think it's up to 13 amps the circuit break you need to have but let's see all right 2.9 oh that's too much now it's shut down all right but we at least know you can do the normal charging let's restart it Yeah, it should work. All right, the normal mode will do it. It overpowered, but now it's back again. 2.2 kilowatts. Yeah, that's kind of awesome. Can do basically everything you can do with the normal outlet. And also I should speak about the voltage sag. We were at 3.8 volts, so around 1.3 volts voltage sag, which is not a lot actually. It's like 0 0.8, 0 0.6 C from the battery. So it's not even one C rate, which is very good. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video inspired you to go and borrow batteries from the recycling center and save the planet. Go down in the comments and let me know what batteries you are using for your project.